processes and before that the polytropic processes and of course the four standard type of processes so let's take the understanding from there onwards okay So first law and its applications. So what we were looking at is, is um, the previous lecture, what we looked at is first of all, polytropic processes. So that is a family of curves or family of processes you can say where pv to the power alpha is constant and alpha can be any real number example it can be one it can be zero it can be half it can be minus half it can be minus two etc okay so for example if alpha is equal to minus two it means pv to the power minus two is constant it means that P is proportional to V square. So this would be a type of process where our PV graph would look like a parabolic a quadratic kind of curve. Okay, where pressure would be proportional to square of volume. So such a graph would look like this type of a shape. So in general, this area would represent the work done. So that would be that area. Okay. And Q would be equal to NC delta T. And delta U would be equal to n f by 2 r delta t. But for a general polytropic process, the important formula that we had seen is that in such a process, the value of molar specific heat capacity becomes Cv plus r upon 1 minus alpha. So it becomes f by 2 r plus r upon 1 minus alpha. Okay. So q becomes n c delta t accordingly. And also the value of work done, which is integration PDB, that becomes NR delta T upon one minus alpha. So these two are the important formulae. Okay. The value of C and the value of W. So in this particular case, you can see that if we have this situation, it means alpha is equal to minus two. It means the molar specific heat capacity will be CV plus R upon one minus of minus two. So it'll become CV plus R by three. Okay. And we will define Q like this. And the work done will also become NR delta T upon one minus alpha. So in this case, it would become NR delta T upon three. So this is just one special example of a polytropic equation. So this derivation and the application of this is one of the things we had looked at in the last lecture, polytropic processes. So just uh, go through this one so that you have a recap of it and then we'll see another example of that, which we'll solve. Okay. And then of course, after this, we had gone through the concept of cyclic processes and we had seen that there are two types of cyclic processes. One where Q and W are positive. That means heat is supplied to the system as, and work is done by the gas. And the other one where Q and W are negative, that means heat is extracted from the system and work is done on the gas because work done by the gas is negative. So we will discuss further about the two classifications of uh, the cyclic processes today and numerical examples. And with that, we'll be winding up uh, in this week, we'll be winding up first law of thermodynamics and its applications. Okay.
Okay, so let's let's look at an, another example of this. So now next example, we have a situation where a gas is expanded through a process such that its volume is directly proportional to square root of its temperature. If V is volume and T is temperature in Kelvins. So it's a process where temperature volume is proportional to square root of temperature. Okay, from an initial state, P1 equal to one atmosphere, V1 equal to six liters and temperature equal to 150 Kelvin to a final temperature of 600 Kelvin. Okay. So first of all, find P2 and V2. Okay. Secondly, if the gas is monoatomic, okay, then find Q, W and delta U for the process. Okay. So let's try out this question next. Uh, I'll just give you a bit of time to go through it and try and see if you can apply the concepts we've been discussing for it. Okay. Remember that it's a ideal monoatomic gas. So you can always use the, what are the fundamental equations that you can use? You can use the ideal gas equation. Okay. So that is PV equal to NRT. And you can use the application of first law that is Q is equal to delta U plus W. So these are the two things that you will always rely on. Apart from the given equation over here, and the given equation is that volume is proportional to square root of temperature. Or you can say that temperature is proportional to square of volume. So this is another thing that we have to use. So these two standard equations which are applicable for any type of gas, any type of ideal gas undergoing a thermodynamic process along with the specific given equation in this question that volume is proportional to square root of temperature. So you have to make use of this information. Okay. And of course, finally, you have to make use of this information also that it is monoatomic. So degrees of freedom are three or CV is three by two R okay. and all these things. So just give this question a try. We'll discuss in a few minutes. Okay.
Okay, so anyone understood how we deal with this question? Is this a polytropic process? Can you tell me whether the question involves whether the particular process involves a polytropic process? From this equation that volume is proportional to square root of temperature, what can you tell about the relation between pressure and volume? Okay, what is the relation between pressure and volume? So for that, we'll use the relation that volume is equal to some constant into square root of temperature. So that means volume is equal to some constant into PV upon NR using the fact that PV is equal to NRT. So that means volume is proportional to square root of pressure into volume. Or square both the sides v square is proportional to pb so that means p is proportional to v or pv to the power minus one is constant so it is a polytropic process it is pv to the power alpha is constant where alpha is equal to minus one so if alpha is equal to minus one you can see that p is proportional to v that means P by V is proportional to V or P is proportional to V square or V is proportional to root T. Okay. So that's what this means. So it's a polytropic process. So now you can make use of everything that we've learned about polytropic process in the last lecture and proceed accordingly. Right. So now just use the data given in the question to work out the different parts. So to convert it into a relation from volume and temperature to into a relation of pressure and volume. And the moment you do that, you can see that it is a polytropic process. So you can directly use those equations.
Okay, very good, Kunj. Let's discuss about the state first. All right. Anybody else getting the answers? No. Okay. So let's let's see the. So once we understood polytropic process, now next thing let's see that volume is proportional to square root of temperature. That means v two by v one is square root of t two by t one. So we can use this v two divided by six liters, which was v one, is equal to square root of t two by t one. That means the volume has expanded to twelve liters. And now you can use the relation that P1 V1 upon T1 is equal to P2 V2 upon T2. So the final pressure would have become T2 by T1. So that is four times okay, into V1 by V2, which is half into the initial pressure. So that is two times the initial pressure. So the pressure has become Two atmospheres. So correct, Kunj, you have got the correct answers. So the final volume we can express as twelve into ten to the power minus three meter cube, and the pressure is approximately two into ten to the power five pascals. So now, once you got the state. The final state. Now we can use the polytropic equation. So, okay, so Q, so molar specific heat capacity is Cv plus R upon one minus alpha, and here alpha is equal to minus one. So, C is equal to three by two R because it's monoatomic plus R upon one minus minus one. So you can see that C will become two R. So Q will become n C delta T. So that means it will become n into two times r into t two minus t one. So we can write that as two times t two v two minus t one v one. That is two times n r t two minus t one. That is so that is twice of two into twelve. So that's twenty four minus initial pressure was one, volume was six. Okay, so this is in liter atmosphere. So convert that to joules. So two into eighteen into ten raised power two joules. So this is the heat supplied. Okay, thirty-six hundred joules is the heat supplied during this process. You can also visualize this process that pressure is directly proportional to volume. So in the PV space, this process will be looking like this. Going from a pressure of one atmosphere and a volume of six liters to a pressure of two atmospheres and a volume of. Twelve liters. And the temperature here was one fifty Kelvin. The 
temperature at this point is 600 kelvin so this is how the process looks okay so delta u we can calculate as n f by 2r delta t so that is n into 3 by 2r so that is 3 by 2 times p2 v2 minus p1 v1 So that is going to be 2700 degrees. And now we can just connect these two and you can calculate work done is Q minus W, Q minus delta U. Or in this case, that is the same thing as NR delta T upon one minus alpha, whichever way you choose to do it. So work done will become 900 degrees. We can even calculate the work done from the area. You can see that this area it is half of sum of parallel sides, so that is one plus two into the distance between them, which is six into one hundred. So that is so as expected, nine hundred joules. So you have some optional methods also as far as calculation of work done is concerned in this case because the graph is very simple so you have to just use the formula of area of trapezium okay so i hope this is clear to all of you it's very good kunj you got the answers correct okay. so note this down quickly so that we can move on to cyclic processes next and discuss more about that
Okay, so hope this question is fully clear to all of you. Now let's move on to cyclic processes as I was telling you about earlier. Okay. So we discussed in the last section that cyclic processes are ones where the PV graph is a closed loop. So basically you come back to the initial state that you started from. So there are two types of cyclic processes. One where the PV graph is a clockwise loop and the second where the PV graph is an anti-clockwise loop. So accordingly, we can see whether the process involves heat being supplied to the gas and work being done by the gas, or the process involves the reverse of that. That is, heat is extracted from the gas and work is done on the gas. So if it is a clockwise process, okay. so you can see here that in this process, Q for the cycle will be equal to W for the cycle, which will be a positive quantity, whereas delta U will be obviously negative. So this is a state function. Whereas if we run the same type of cycle, but in reverse order, so we are going in an anti-clockwise. PV loop. Whereas this is a clockwise PV loop. 
so that will in fact become this area okay so it will be positive of the area whereas here if we go from a to b and back to a but through an anti clockwise loop you can see that q for the cycle will be equal to w for the cycle which will be equal to negative of so it is negative of this area okay. and obviously delta u for the cycle is z so this type of a cycle involves heat supplied to the gas is positive and work done by the gas is positive so the net work done the net heat supplied to the gas is positive so it is called a heat engine cycle and we'll discuss more about heat engines including carnot engine whereas this involves something where net heat is absorbed from the gas because net heat supplied is negative so that means heat is being absorbed from the gas and net and work is being done on the gas because net work done by the gas is negative okay so this is what is called a reverse heat engine or a refrigeration cycle so in practical physics or in engineering an example of a heat engine cycle would be obviously carnot engine is there but also and we'll come to what is in detail is a carnot engine but also there is internal combustion engine it converts heat heat into mechanical work the heat produced by burning or combusting a fossil fuel a petroleum based fuel is converted into mechanical work or kinetic energy of the you know transmission axle connected to the engine whereas any compressor is an example of something which is working on a reverse heat engine cycle compressor of a refrigerator or an air conditioning unit these are examples of reverse heat engine or refrigeration cycles
Okay, so let's look at an example of a cyclic process like this. So now suppose we have a situation like this, a sample of oxygen gas initially at the state of pressure of one atmosphere, volume of two liters, okay, and a temperature of 200 kelvins is heated isochorically to temperature equal to 400 kelvin let's say whatever pressure and volume be the case okay then it is isothermally expanded to volume V3, which we don't know. Okay. And finally, isobarically compressed back to initial state. V1 equal to one atmosphere, V1 equal to two liters, and temperature equal to 200 Kelvin. So you can see the sum of the three processes should form a cyclic loop. Okay. So first of all, plot an approximate graph of the cyclic process formed. by the three individual processes. Okay, in succession. Given above, so plot that graph. Okay. Is the cycle a heat engine cycle or A refrigeration cycle and from that find the Q of the cycle. What is the net heat given during the cycle? Okay. So just try out this question. It will also help you revise the application of the fundamental concepts involved in uh, first law of thermodynamics. Just a moment. I will I will get this shared screen once more. Yeah.
Okay, very good points. So I will uh, verify your answers. Okay. So very good. As you can see that going from this state to this state, we are having what kind of thing? Isochoric. So isochoric me kya hota hai? Volume is constant and pressure is proportional to temperature. So P2 upon P1 is equal to T2 upon P1. So that will tell us that my pressure has doubled because the temperature has doubled. So pressure is becoming two atmosphere. Okay. But volume is remaining equal. So because volume is constant. Okay. So you can see volume will remain equal to two liter. Okay. And my temperature has changed to 200 uh, to 400 Kelvin. Okay. So now the next thing, as we are going from this state to this state, okay, it is isothermally expanded. So in the isothermal process, what will happen? Temperature is constant and pressure is inversely proportional to volume. Okay. So from that, I know that in this state, my temperature will be equal to the temperature in the earlier state, which was 400 Kelvin. Okay. But my P3 upon P2 will be equal to V2 by V3. Okay. Or we can say that P3 V3 is equal to P2 V2. Okay. Where we just seen that P2 was uh, two atmospheres and V2 was two liters. So the product of these two should be this, okay. And now the most interesting thing, the last part, we are isobarically compressing back from here to the original state now. So if this is isobaric, then pressure is constant and volume is proportional to temperature. So this now tells me that T1 must be equal to P3 because it's isobaric. So that tells me that my P3, in fact, is equal to how much? It is equal to one atmosphere. Okay. And V1 by V3 should be equal to T1 by T3. So that will confirm the volume thing also that, okay, two liters upon whatever V3 is, should be equal to this temperature, which is 200 Kelvin divided by this temperature T3, which was 400 Kelvin. So you can see that this V3 must have been four liters. Okay. So now you, now that you want, got all these values now, uh, P2, V2 and also P3 and V3 and T3 and all these things. Next, you can move on to the graph part. It'll be quite easy. Okay, so just try to make the graph uh, yourself. I'll put it up in a moment, okay. But all this information, if you put it together and you know how each process looks on the PV graph, it should not be difficult to plot out the cycle. 
so just to give you a hint remember that isochoric process looks like a vertical line right straight vertical line isobaric process looks like a horizontal line right and isothermal process looks like a hyperbola isothermal pv graph looks like this this is an isotherm where p is inversely proportional to v okay this type of process so now in along with the first and the last process the in between process the second one is the isotherm so just try to plot out the cycle yes very good kunj it is a your answer is correct about that part also i'm just waiting for the others also to give me some answers so i'm not telling them out yet okay
Okay, very good. Let's verify the answer in this question now. Finally, so what is happening? First of all, let me make the graph. Okay, so my graph is going to be like this. Now, one thing also you should be careful about now that in a standard graph, when we say PV, it means pressure is on the vertical axis and V is on the horizontal axis. But in case a question gives you a VP graph like this where V is vertical and P is horizontal, then you should, you should not say that, okay, clockwise means uh, heat engine and anti-clockwise because this is a different graph. This is a VP graph. So you have to convert this VP graph into a PV graph and then understand. So I'll explain through this question only. So anyway, now in this question, let's see how the process looks. So our first process is isochoric and we are heating the gas isochorically. So this is how we are going. Okay. So let's say this process is from P1, okay, which was equal to one atmosphere, P1, which was equal to two liters, if I remember, okay. And the temperature of the gas here was 200 Kelvin to a state where the temperature was double 400 Kelvin. So the pressure also became double, it became two atmospheres. Okay. This is in liters, okay. Then what we did is we isothermally went along this line. So this isotherm is curved like this, let's say. Okay, so this in general is an isotherm. So this is isotherm at 400 Kelvin. But we went to some point such that we can come back to our original point one. No, we are coming back to our original point one by an isobaric process. So that means we have to stop the isothermal process at whatever volume this line meets it. We cannot go beyond this or before this. So the, the third point has to be here. Okay, so the third point has to be at this particular point here such that this volume V3 is such that this pressure P3 is equal to P1 at this point equal to one atmosphere. Okay. Obviously temperature T3 is equal to temperature T2 of 400 Kelvin. Okay. So therefore now we can see that P3 V3 is equal to P2 V2. So from that also we can see, or we can see that V3 by V1 is equal to T3 by T1, whichever of these two we see this one or this one, from either of them, we can understand that V3 will become equal to four liters. Okay. So once we have got that, it's easy. So we can see it is a clockwise cycle. So it's a heat engine cycle. So Q of the cycle is positive. Work done by the gas during the cycle is positive. So it is a, this thing, it is a heat engine cycle. Uh, the point I was illustrating earlier, which is apart from the solution of this question, if I make the VP graph, no, volume versus pressure graph, you will see it will be an anti-clockwise view. Okay. Because the volume pressure graph for this will look like this. The isochoric heating will look like this first. This is from one to this is two. Then the isothermal process will look like this. And then finally, the isobaric compression will look like this. Okay. So this VT graph, or sorry, VP graph, is for the same process, okay? But when you convert it to a PV graph, it looks like this. This is a PV graph. So the PV graph has a clockwise cycle, okay? So you should not confuse the VP graph with the PV graph, okay? Might look similar, but it's misleading when it comes to clockwise and anti-clockwise. So when you are judging whether the clockwise uh, graph is there or anti-clockwise and therefore it is heat engine or re refrigeration cycle, 
you should always refer to the PV graph and not the BP graph. Okay. So anyway, now let's calculate Q for the cycle. That will be, let's say this is AB. This is C. Okay. So that will be QAB plus QBC plus QCA. Similarly, W for the cycle, which is also equal to Q for the cycle, will be WAB plus WBC plus WCA. Okay. So we have either of the two options. We can use this to calculate Q of the cycle, or we can use the left-hand side, which is the QAB plus QBC. Whichever you feel is more convenient and which will give the answer faster with less calculation, you should go for that option. Okay. Here we will calculate by both, both the methods and show that they're equal. But at the exam level, you should have that presence of mind that, okay, one of the two is easier to calculate than the other. So go for that one and not the second one. Okay. So try this out next. मैं नहीं फिर दिखाऊंगी ऐसा करेगी तो मैं नहीं दिखाऊंगी जा
Okay, so let's see how we'll get uh, the answers in each of these cases now. So if we go with this method, QAB you can see is going to be NCV delta T. QBC is going to be NRT natural log of final by initial volume. And QCA is going to be NCP delta T. Okay. So remember it was oxygen gas. So oxygen gas means that degrees of freedom are five. So CB is five by two R, CP is seven by two R. So further this formula will become like this. It will become N into five by two R into T2 minus T1 plus NR T2 natural log of V3 by V2 plus N7 by 2R into T1 minus T3. That is for CA. So we can write this as 5 by 2 times P2 minus P1 into P1 plus P2, V2 or whatever into natural log of V3 by V2 plus 7 by 2 into that common pressure, which is P1 into the volume difference V1 minus V3. So this is the easiest way of doing the calculation. So 5 by 2 into, now just refer to the graph. Okay, So 1 to 2 atmospheres. So this is, so I'm just minimizing this a little more so I can refer to the graph. Okay, so this P2 minus P1 term will become one atmospheres into the volume is two liters. Okay, so this is in liter atmosphere on this. Okay, plus P2 V2 is uh, two into two, that is four liter atmosphere okay. into natural log of four by two. So that is going to be two plus seven by two into this common pressure, which is one into this volume difference, which is minus two. So this all is in liter atmosphere. Okay. So let's see how much this is coming. Plus five, plus four ln two, minus seven. So that is four times natural log of two, minus seven. Now natural log of two, we can take as 0.693. So very nearly equal to 0.7. So this becomes approximately, sorry, this is two. Okay, so this becomes uh, four into 0.7, so 2.8 minus two, so 0 0.8 liter atmosphere. Or this Q of the cycle, very nearly becomes 800, sorry, 80 joules, but more importantly, positive of 80 joules. Now, same way, you should be able to show this from here also. You should be able to show this from this calculation also. It should come out to be the same. The individual values of WAB, WBC, and WCA will be different, but their algebraic sum, which is the net work done by the cycle, that should come out to be the same.
for it so let's see the calculation for the work done part also so w of the cycle w a b plus b c plus c a now the moment you write this you'll realize this is the easier of the two calculations why because a b is isochoric so one thing you don't have to calculate and this is isothermal so it is nrt natural b final upon b initial natural log of that and w c a is very simple it is p delta v okay because it's isobaric process so this will become 0 plus nrt2 natural log of v3 by v2 okay plus this value of pressure which is p1 into the volume change which is v1 minus v3 so you can see that you will get 0 plus p2 v2 ln v3 by v2 plus p1 into v1 minus v3 so that's 0 plus 4 ln 2 okay plus this pressure which was one atmosphere into the volume difference which is 2 liters minus 2 liters rather okay so you can see you're getting that thing only 4 ln 2 minus 2 in liter atmospheres which is the same thing as plus 80 joules okay so from that you can see that work done for the cycle is indeed equal to q for the cycle just verifies this over here also which is in this case plus 80 joules okay but obviously you don't have to do both the calculations you just need to do one of the two and you know the other will be equal because it's a cyclic process after all and here i just demonstrated to you that out of the two options the work done option would have been easier for us to calculate less number of things to do in that so that is also important
okay so let's move on to the next part now understanding heat engines in more detail So if we look at the general schematic of a heat engine, the process always involves three important parts. Any heat engine cycle involves three important parts. The first is the heat source. Like for example, in the case of by internal combustion engine, this part of the cycle is taken care of by the burning of the fuel or the combustion of the fuel. So petroleum vapor is injected into the cylinder of the internal combustion engine through a process which is called fuel injection. Okay. And then there is the process of sparking it using the spark plugs, which as you know, forms an important part of you know, the engine mechanism. So that acts as the, so that creates the combustion. So that part of the heat engine acts like the heat source. Okay. Then another part of the heat engine is the heat sink. Okay. And in between the two, what is running is the, the cyclic process. So this is the heat engine cycle, which is running such that every, every time one cycle or one loop is completed, a certain amount of heat is absorbed by the cycle from the heat source, whereas a certain amount of heat is dissipated into the heat sink and that we denote with Q2. And in the process, the net work done by the cycle is W. So Q1 is the heat absorbed in one cycle. Because the cyclic process keeps running back to back. It's not just one cycle. So a heat engine is a device to use to generate mechanical work. Okay. From the heat supplied by a heat source. So it accomplishes this task. Okay, this is done by by a cyclic process. Okay, running continuously. So Q1 is the amount of heat absorbed per cycle. W is the net work done by the cyclic process okay. in one cycle. Okay. And Q2 is the amount of heat dissipated or heat lost in one cycle. Okay. So therefore, per cycle, the net heat becomes Q1 minus Q2. And the work done per cycle becomes W. So we have W is equal to Q1 minus Q2. So for example, coming back to the situation of the internal combustion engine, in every cycle of the so-called cylinder of the heat engine, there is combustion that occurs once. So a certain amount of petroleum uh, vapor is injected into the cylinder and it is sparked or it is combusted by creating spark by the spark plug. So then as it burns or as it combusts, a certain amount of heat is created. So that is your Q1. But a certain amount of heat out of Q1 also gets dissipated through the vapors coming out of the exhaust pipe. So that is equal to Q2. Not all the heat Q1 is converted into work. 
certain amount of it is dissipated or lost through the exhaust process so the net amount of work done in the absence of any other non conservative forces like friction and all that in a highly ideal engine where there is no, nothing else dissipating energy the net amount of work done will be q1 minus q2 so what we are looking for is to convert maximum amount of the heat supplied by the source q1 into work done by the system w whereas what we want to do with q2 on the other hand is we want to minimize the amount of heat dissipated into the heat sink so that we can maximize the work done okay. so basically what you can see is that the lower the value of q2 okay that is the heat dissipated as a fraction of q1 the more efficient is the process because what is a process the process is conversion of heat from the source into work into mechanical work by the cyclic process so that is why we define something called the efficiency of the heat engine now we define the efficiency as a parameter We use the symbol eta for it. It is W by Q1, or it also becomes Q1 minus Q2 by Q1, or 1 minus Q2 by Q1. So that's why we said the smaller the value of Q2 as a fraction of Q1, the more efficient the process is of converting heat from the heat source into useful mechanical work W. so this is the definition of efficiency of a heat engine you can also convert it into a percentage efficiency by multiplying it by 100 just make a note of this quickly people
कि स्टूडेंट सॉरी आई गॉट माय कंप्यूटर हैंग्ड एनीवे सो दिस इज वे विल कंक्लूड टुडे सेशन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एफिशिएंसी ओके एंड वी विल टेक इट फॉरवर्ड फ्रॉम हियर इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी हैव दिस वीक सो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट कारनॉट इंजन एंड एफिशिएंसी ऑफ वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ इंजन इंक्लूडिंग कारनॉट साइकिल्स इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर and that with that we will complete this portion of heat and thermodynamics okay people so wish you all the best that's it for today's session okay. and please uh, take care and be safe right now because uh, it's really a very bad situation in terms of covid pandemic right so you have to take extra care uh, please uh, observe all the social distancing norms uh, try to minimize going out okay health is more important than anything else at this stage another 2 3 months then things will get back to normal So anyway that's it for today's session wish you all the best people